So the time has finally come to try to lift the knee off of this big milling machine. Now this is a pretty big piece of cast iron. I'm guessing four to 600 pounds. It needs to be lifted straight up close to the center of gravity as I can get so this thing doesn't bind on the way out because this is gonna be sent out and get ground because it's got some damage on it. It's gotta come off. So it's gotta go up a, quite a ways in order to come off of here. And we gotta be very careful. That way we don't break anything. That would not be good. So let me bring you over here. We'll talk about how we're gonna rig this thing up. I'm not exactly for sure how I'm gonna do that yet. And then we'll talk more about the setup. Got a neat gantry crane in the shop. So if you're not up to speed on the previous videos that I've done on this machine, the reason why I'm removing this big casting is because of the damage here in the middle of the machine way. If I set a straight edge across this machine way, not so worn here and not so worn here, I can stick a three and a half thousandths feeler gauge, you know, in the gap. So it's got quite a belly in it and some heavy, heavy scoring. The easiest way to fix this is to send it off, put it on a big surface grinder and have them reground. You know, then you can hand scrape it to the accuracy that you want. So what I'm thinking as far as rigging goes, how I'm gonna get an anchor point on this, is if I can find a bar that will go down in here, we've got some big ledges, we can stick a bar down in there and lift from pretty much any point till we find the center of gravity, depending on the way that this knee hangs. That way, once we pick it up, it doesn't bind. We gotta pull the gib out of this thing as well to loosen it up on here and take off the big uh, lead screw. So let's uh, figure out a way to make that uh, rigging point happen and then we'll start trying to lift this off. So I think that this, if it'll fit in here, I think it will, will uh, be more than enough. Oh yeah, that'll work just fine. That gives me a, that also gives me a really low point to lift because this gantry is just big enough to lift this thing off, I, I believe. So the good thing about this bar is that uh, it can't come out. It can slide to the side, but only that far. I could put some clamps on there and I can move this anywhere I want on, on this till I, till I get this thing hanging level. So check out the little gantry crane. This belongs to a local viewer of the channel who brought it to me to use until this project was done. It's a really neat little unit, American made. So it's a Vestal is what the tag says. 600 pound or 272 kilos is the lift capacity on this thing. About as simple as it gets as far as its construction. Upright two by two by quarter inch thick square tubing. Uh, feet are C-channel. It's just all bolted together. It's a quarter inch C-channel, by the way. And a uh, small I-beam at the top. It's adjustable in width and really probably better suited for my shop than the hoist that I was considering buying, which was the one-ton uh, Harbor Freight gantry crane, which is substantially larger than this and would take up a lot more shop. And you're not going to be lifting machines around, not the ones that I have anyway, and moving them around with this thing. But as far as moving heavy stock up on the tables, and this would, uh, this would do that no problem. So maybe we'll build something like this you know, here in the upcoming future. So nice little unit, I like it. I've still got a ton of cleaning to do on this machine. It's coming out. I picked up a new set of Allen wrenches. Let me show you. Because of this right here. So many times I've ran into situations where, you know, I can't, can't turn it. Although you can, you know, wanted a longer set. 
So I picked up a set of the Bondus T-handle Allen wrenches. I really like these things. They're quite long and they're really well made and they're not really expensive. Not for what you get anyway. So these are the cheaper Pittsburgh, I think you, Harbor Freight sells these. Really nice because, you know, you got a good leverage on them, which you don't have with these. You know, it's just a straight shank. So you've got that much leverage. But with this, you know, you got that extended arm. So for tighter stuff, these are great. But for anything where you want clearance, you know, these Bondus are really nice. bar to lift that up. Here's the tapered give out of the knee. What do you got in your pocket? <laughs> Is that a squirrel in your pocket? <laughs> Hi, little guy. You're awful cute. Say hello to little chestnut. He's a little boy, little gray squirrel. Yep, eastern gray squirrel. Just uh, big enough to have fur. Yeah. It's a cutie. Mm -hmm. Mm, so cute. So here's the story on Little Chestnut. Cliff Stanton, a uh, viewer of the channel, lives in the same state as me, his neighbor, found this little squirrel. I guess his dog was after it and he was going to be lunch, I guess. The neighbor gave the squirrel to Cliff and threw his hands up and said, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cliff knows that I... Or, me and Elizabeth, basically Elizabeth, has raised several little squirrels successfully that were that had fallen out of nests and, and whatnot. So he looked me up, contacted us, asked us if we'd be interested in raising another one, and we <laughs> said, yeah. So new little boy, eastern gray squirrel. Don't get too attached. As soon as he's strong enough and <laughs> capable of making it on his own good. He'll be set free like all the rest. So, he's a cutie. He'll be around for a little bit. My little guy. <laughs> Don't touch me. These little guys get kind of active when they get this age and they fall out of nests. And uh, the majority of them don't make it. Now that that's out, this shouldn't should move. Oh, it does. Okay. I need to move this lift point out some because it's weighing heavy in the front. It's pretty close to the center. All right. as it's going to get. Now we can lift it up. Six five on here. So here's another instance where uh, the shorter T-handle just won't, won't work well for taking this screw off. I'm having to go up in 
through a gear and uh, I can't tilt this one away far enough to where it doesn't hit the screw. So this should allow me to get this out without having to take it off and reposition it every time. Ah, oh, that worked awesome. My chain hoist worked awesome as well. I do say so myself. So this lifted that no problem at all. Get it real close to the ground. So the main casting looks really good. I mean, nothing, no excessive wear. I mean, obviously it's gonna have some, but nothing that I think I'm gonna concern myself over. Looks pretty good, really. This casting mates to this casting and they've scraped it. What looks to either fit these two to, to mate up really good um, and to scrape it into alignment. So this is 90 degrees to this. So, you know, well made, not just thrown together. And this screw goes inside of another screw. So it can, like a hydraulic cylinder inside of a hydraulic cylinder. So it can be half as long and lift twice as high. I believe that's, that's what it does anyway. So I said four to 600 pounds on this casting. It's 418 pounds. So I was in the ballpark anyway. I thought it would be actually more like 500 pounds right around in there, but uh, no. It felt lighter than what I thought it would, than what I was expecting on this chain hoist. Still not light by any stretch, but.
So check out this awesome roadside find that Elizabeth scored. Yes, she did. She's awesome when it comes to that kind of stuff. She knows what I like, and uh, it's roadside junk. <laughs> I know nothing about this other than it's a high-performance, easy-start GCV160 overhead cam Honda push mower. Non-self-propelled mulcher. Covers off. It's not broken. It's just been removed. Uh, looks like a 20-inch. I was told by the guy that owned it that it did run last year. That means nothing, and really, I mean, that was last year, and who knows if this thing's hit stumps or whatever. So the first thing you always do on an unknown push mower is check the crankshaft to see if it's bent, because if it is, there's no reason to repair anything. The mower's gonna be junk, it's gonna vibrate. It's not worth fixing, dangerous, actually. So let's check that, because if it's not bent, this could be a pretty easy repair, and we could wind up with a pretty nice push mower, actually. So let's check that, see if we can fix this thing. It's actually better than the mower that I'm currently using. So here's a still photo of some of the other items that she picked up at the same time. Two old cabinets that I'm kind of going over, and two nice stainless steel jugs sitting on top of one of those cabinets, and then also a leaf blower that's not pictured. So I guess, uh, rather than check the crankshaft first, while you're on the side of the road, before you even take that thing home, unless you've got use for parts, pull the dipstick on it, check and make sure it's got oil in it. And this one does. And it's not filthy. So hasn't been run out of oil, at least. That, that's a good indicator that it hasn't. And give it a pull, light pull. That feels good. So now let's check the crankshaft. It's not locked up. So before you turn this thing up and put your hands under it, it's a good idea to pull the spark plug out. That way it has no chance of starting. I was like Glenn Quagmire when I seen this thing off Family Guy. So we got the spark plug out, we got the engine brake handle pulled with a zip tie, and we should be able to spin this thing by hand to see if the crankshaft runs true or you know, runs uh, eccentric. So. Oh man, it is bent. That's why you check them. You never know. Chances are the reason why this guy stopped mowing with this is because it vibrated. He may have not known why it vibrated so bad, but chances are it's because of a rock or a, or a tarp, actually. They will stop one so quick it can bend them. So that's what's wrong with it. You know, you could check to see if it runs. This one's not all that bad and they can be fixed but it's it's not not a good idea really there you go can't win them all so those crankshafts are pretty good material and they're made to bend and not break you can imagine if one they they do on occasion break off but these these lawnmower manufacturers don't want the crankshafts breaking off with the blade whirling around you know so they're good steel, and you probably could get away, especially with that one not being bent that bad, probably a couple hundred thousands out, maybe a little more, um, by tweaking it back to true. And maybe in the future we'll do it. That, for personal use, that, you know, that's okay. But you know, it's not something I would do and then sell. I've seen people do that. Uh, some of these mower shops straighten up these crankshafts and sell them. I worked at a mower shop years ago and uh, the guy that I worked for was not that kind of guy. He would never straighten a crankshaft for an individual, but he would do it on his own stuff, you know, because a lot of times people would bring in a mower and uh, it would be garbage, basically, because it's bent. And he would just tell them, no, I'm not going to fix it. And they could either pay, what was it, a $25 checkout fee, right? There's a fee for you to check out and see what's wrong with the mower. Or, you know, they could leave the mower. That was the option. And some of the nicer ones he would straighten and, and mow his own yard with, right? Or give to a friend that knew the story. But he would never fix a bent crankshaft for a customer, uh, nor would he ever sell a lawnmower that, was, that had had the crankshaft bent. You know, it's just not the right thing to do because it's compromised at that point. So this is the back machine way of the knee that uh, mates up to the casting and you can see somebody's put grease into this oil fitting and that's about how far the grease went. Just right in there, completely stopped up the oil passage. There's really, once it's done, 
there's not a lot you can do about it other than pull the machine apart and clean it. And then that grease just gets dirt and stuff in it and turns into a lapping compound and uh, really just ruins the machine, to be honest. Not designed for grease. But at least we can pull this one apart and clean it. <laughs> they didn't, they must not have seen the oil fittings on the other side because, uh, or at least not this one, because it doesn't have any grease in it. These cuts here are just relief, reliefs from the factory. That way when you put oil in these, you know, it can run and spread its way around on the machine surface. In case you didn't know. So before I send this off to be ground, it's gotta be really clean. Cause nobody's gonna wanna put this casting on, the, on a big nice surface grinder with it having all this uh, debris all over it. In fact, I wouldn't blame them if they just re flat refused to do it if it wasn't clean or charged you to clean it. So, gotta be really clean. All the metal debris off, because it wouldn't take anything to get underneath the mag chuck and cause all kinds of problems or the angle plate or however they fixture this thing in order to grind it. So, gotta be good and clean.
So this forklift wheel is really coming apart now. I got the wheel ordered. I'm hoping it'll come in this week. But uh, you know, they just get fragile and hard. Start falling apart. So it's starting to rain out there. I got a couple pieces of viewer mail that I want to share with you. Actually, these items came in the same box, but they're from two different people. Uh, so two different YouTube creators, actually. So I'll put links to their uh, to their YouTube channels down in the description. And if you would, please go check them out. Uh, they're nice guys. We got Philip Smith from here in the States. And then we got uh, Vladimir Alexenko from over in the Ukraine. That's quite some distance. So I appreciate the gifts, that's for sure. Um, let me share with you what they sent, stuff that I'll definitely use. So Philip Smith over at the YouTube channel Almost Machining sent me this really nice, almost new, uh, to be honest. It looks like it's been barely used. Inner Rapid Tense Test Indicator. I've wanted one of these forever. Uh, just never wanted to drop the, drop the coin on them because they can be quite pricey if you buy them new. You can pick them up used at a relatively reasonable price. But the, the test indicator that I've been using up till now has always got me by and this would have been a luxury for me to for me to buy so philip had several indicators and asked me if i'd be interested in in one and i said absolutely so thank you philip i appreciate that this will be my this will be my go-to indicator and these are built like a tank if you've never actually used one impressively well made
So Vladimir sent me three items. He sent me some air fresheners, which are really cool. It says Biax, which is the power scraping company that does uh, that manufactures power scraping for machine rebuilding. It's got his uh, last name on there. Really nice. One that is black ice and one that is bubblegum uh, scented. That smells good. And I've never noticed black ice having a smell. I have slipped on it but never smelled it. Um, so the black ice will go in my truck. The bubble gum my wife can have. Um, some marking compound for machine rebuilding because that's what he, uh, the majority of the work that he does is the uh, precision work. So I appreciate that. I'll probably use this stuff on, uh, on the machine rebuild as far as the do all mill. Let me show you what else he sent. Really neat. I appreciate it. So Vladimir also sent me a really nice shop apron. Got the American flag and the Ukrainian flag. Got his uh, uh, logo embroidered on the front with the biax with some nice pockets, although the neck is quite long for me. I'll have to get Elizabeth to draw that up, but this is a nice shop apron. And I will definitely wear it. So thank you, Vladimir, I appreciate it. I cannot pronounce his YouTube channel, so you will have to go to the link in the description to check them out. Both these guys, they're definitely worth uh, giving a look, so please do go give them a subscription. Look at that flopping like that. That wheel is falling apart. So there's the wheel for the lift. Just showed up in the post. Nice heavy cast iron hub. A little heavier duty than what I was actually expecting. So good looking. The one that's on it's yellow. This one's red. Makes absolutely no difference. What does matter is that this is a freshly manufactured wheel and not some old wheel that's been sitting on a warehouse shelf for the last 10 years. Because what we're experiencing is the rubber failure on our forklift right now. We don't want to buy a wheel that has a rubber on it that's as old as the one we're taking off. This wheel's freshly manufactured. It's important. Also, make sure to give them your model and your serial number off your lift in order to get the correct one. Hopefully they gave us the right one. We'll find out, but it looks good. And it's nice and uh, nice and pliable. It's not hard like the one that's on it. The bearings for the dual milling machine motor showed up as well, so that's good. Let's see if we can't get this thing uh, installed. So I haven't felt great this week. Kind of got a sore throat and uh, feel <laughs> feel like I've been drugged behind a horse. Well, actually, I don't know what that feels like, but you get the idea. I don't feel good. Could be allergies because it is that time of year. This thing's going to have to actually go up quite a bit. I'm going to have to put some blocks of wood under it. Another good use for the toe jack. Let me grab some blocks. So there's a look at the old wheel still on this thing. See, there's a big chunk out of it there. They sure don't give you much room to get up in there to get those uh, studs off. So I've got this thing blocked up pretty good. Not interested in losing a hand. just fits out of there. Man, it was about to lose it all. There's a big clump of Chloe hair. Huh. Looks like it's the right wheel though. Yeah, it's almost uh, sticky. It's just breaking down. But that is correct. So, let's see if we can't stick this one on there. Come 
on. Because mm, I'm doing it backwards. I think that's it. <laughs> Wasn't too bad. Let's give it a test run, see if it'll smoke this new tire. I'm gonna have to replace that cord as well. It's pretty pretty bad. There, there's four wheels on this thing. The drive wheel, there's a pivoting caster, which seems like it's made of a harder rubber. And then there's the two front wheels, which I think are made out of the same material as that rear drive wheel. Um, who knows? If the front wheels fall apart, I'll replace them. But until then, I've spent enough on this thing. That back wheel was, you know, not too bad. 200 bucks, but still 200 bucks, right? Oh man, that's much nicer. like it should be. Excellent. All right. Now clean up all of its wheel droppings that it uh, was depositing everywhere. This stuff was just falling all over the place and that's how I knew it was coming apart. I mean, it wouldn't have been long. We wouldn't have been able to move it at all. If that big chunk would have come out, you know, it would have not been good. So I guess that's it this week, man. I'm glad that wheel held together until my replacement came in. I was concerned it was going to come completely apart before before the new one showed up. I noticed that every day that I'd use it, the chunks it was leaving behind were getting larger and larger on the floor. So I'm glad to have that changed, and I'm also glad that I got the knee off the milling machine. I was a bit concerned that that wouldn't go as smooth as it did. That's a pretty heavy piece, and it had to be lifted relatively high. But actually, it went about as good as I think it could have, and I think it'll be pretty easy to get back on as well. Cliff Stanton, the guy I mentioned earlier who brought us a uh, little chestnut the squirrel, he, he also brought me this as a shop gift, and it is a Wilson Rockwell Test Block Calibration Kit. Three blocks of steel of different hardnesses that are they're calibration blocks for this machine here. It's a Rockwell hardness tester to test the hardness of steel, so I appreciate that. And the, and the squirrel, I guess. Um, little chestnut seems to be in good shape, good health, and I'm happy that, uh, that that's the case because little uh, hazelnut, the last squirrel that we raised, uh, she had some issues, but I think little, uh, little chestnut's in good shape, so we'll be seeing, seeing him around. Last week, uh, when I said I would be bringing something in the shop that uh, Thought a lot of people would like to see. Um, people started in the comments, some of them thinking that I was going to be bringing them the do-all bandsaw. And I have not forgotten about that saw, not even in the least, and we will bring it back in the shop. I was referring to the squirrel. Um, due to the shop falling down, right, it took the back seat, and now that the do-all uh, milling machines in here and tore down, I don't need another piece on the floor. Although we will bring that saw back in before too off long. I did work hard on that and I would like to at least finish it up. Whether I keep it or not, you know, that's you know, still up in the air, but I do plan to finish that saw. So at least finish it to a point to where it's a good usable saw. So I think that's it this week. Hopefully I feel better next week. Been a little under the weather, but 
I think it's probably just allergies, but still not at 100%. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, and anybody who supported me on this project. So that's it. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. Waiting for the sun